Welcome back to Market on Calls. Let's continue to assess an epic week for stocks in the market with Shana Sissel joining us, founder and president of Banry on Capital Management. Shana, good to see you again. Great to be back in studio. Yes, welcome. Great to have you, especially on a very busy week. Yep, it's been like two years since I've been in studio, I feel like. Wow, well, it's a pleasure, uh, especially on a week with like a ton going on. So what's your main takeaway? Like start at the top, I guess, now that we've got pretty much most of the information. Yeah, so election was the biggest unknown and the polls were showing a virtual tie. Now that's, to me, signaled it was probably gonna be a Trump uh, win uh, just because people don't like to admit that they vote for Donald Trump, so yeah. it doesn't help pollsters. What I, I think um, was largely unexpected was the fact that we have Republican kind of a red wave, if you will. It's not, I don't think the total house count right. is there, but it's going in that direction. Most of the information going that way. And, and um, it's been a while since we've had complete one party control of Congress and the White House. So that's an interesting development. Um, the market tends to like gridlock, but if they're gonna have a one party control, Republican control is usually the better option as it tends to be more uh, supportive of economic growth, lower taxes, less regulation, just those things tend to be good for the economy. We got kind of a chart here, partisan control from uh, Strategus, right? Uh, which generally most are above 10%, like most outcomes are above 10%, yes. which is good. Yes, uh, and you know, we've had incredible market. I think the S&P's up 32% year to date. Um, so this is just telling us that we're gonna see continued strong market performance. And again, a second Trump administration tends to be largely positive for um, you know, the economy and for stocks. So. I think this is all good for investors. And then we had the rate cuts. Right. And then we get those on top of it. Yeah. Uh, Powell seems confident that he gets to keep his job. To me, that was one of the, like, if maybe the only major risk of the potential Trump admin is that they mess with the Fed. But the report from CNN says they're going to let him serve out his term. And Powell, lawyer, says, I know my laws. I know my rights. I'm going to stay there. So it seemed like to me like one risk was kind of already removed. Yes, true. But I... I I kind of feel like he was a little combative in the way he responded to the question in this no, presser yesterday. No. Uh, he was like, absolutely not. Um, and that's an interesting dynamic. I'm curious to see how this plays out. That first, Unresolved tension, possibly? Yeah, the first time uh, Trump was in an office, there was a ton of volatility in that relationship. Yeah. Um, Trump seems to have, you know, gotten a little less combative. Um, I don't know if it's... Having a woman kind of running his campaign now as chief of staff, uh, maybe that has kind of helped influence uh, like a more calm uh, Trump. A softer touch. A softer touch. Uh -huh. But um, I'm, I'm really curious to see how that plays out because the one who seemed most combative when these questions started coming his way was actually Powell, not right. Trump, which is not what anybody would expect. It's a fair point, especially when I think a lot of the negativity, when Trump did say some negative things, but a lot of it came from his kind of staffers and people and mm -hmm. stuff. Like they use terms like Powell and the Fed abetting inflation, where it's like the possibility of them like getting in his ear to do what? Like cut rates more and then rates really blow out? You know, like it's like, it's, so I get the point that maybe that's not over yet as right. a potential point of tension. As far as the overall kind of trend for markets pre-existing this election and then now going forward, do you view it as like this kind of fresh new set of catalysts or is it more just kind of the status quo of a better than expected economy, stock markets and big tech doing all right? Um, no, I, I think that there's the potential for us to see a catalyst here. Um, I think um, the Fed is going to pause in December. It would be smart to do so to kind of see what the next administration and the new Congress has in terms of fiscal policy. Um, and there's no need to cut anymore. In fact, I thought 50 basis points was aggressive with the first cuts. So uh, I, I really think that pausing in December is the right move. Um, there are unintended consequences all the time if the Fed, you know, overreaches. And, and so I think ultimately... Um, Pausing is a good thing. I do think we'll continue to see strong economic growth. I think we'll see policies that are supportive to the economy. Um, and I think that just continues to help the market move forward. And, and th that's, again, good for investors. What do you think about his uh, Powell's response to the question about rates and the fact that we've got yields up since he cut? To me, I kind of wanted him to explore that a little bit more, but he sort of just dismissed it as, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with the market over time. It could be a short-term thing. But I think to your point with the pause being kind of outlined in December, you know, maybe the bond market is telling us we're good for now. Yeah, I, 
I, I agree with that. You know, there is, I'm a huge fan of strategic research, as I'm sure you can tell oh, yeah. from reading my Some notes. of the best, for sure. Um, so they have a great fixed income strategy uh, a strategist over there who kind of explored this idea in a recent piece, okay. um, talking about how treasury yields were up. But if you looked at other parts of the fixed income markets, namely investment grade, high yield, MBS, uh, CMBS, those types of things, actually spreads have tightened. Um, so he felt that when you have yields rising in treasuries, but other spreads outside of treasuries tightening, mm -hmm. that's actually more indicative of a bond market that agrees with the equity markets that the uh, economy is going to be stronger. Totally. And, and not um, a concern. Love that. It's a really good point. Kind of the bear steepening versus kind of the bold, you know, you look at the chart and you go, oh, yields go up, but there are different reasons yields go up. The credit markets seem to echo some of the positivity in the equities. Uh, it's good. Tom Suturis. I mean, yes, it's a I Greek, wasn't even going to try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I only try because we've got some, some Greeks here. <laughs> but, uh, all right, so I like that point. Let's talk some equity strategy uh, themes, stock picks. What to you stands out right now? So tech has been the theme for most of this year, and I'm at, most people are aware that I'm a huge bull on AI and NVIDIA. Um, but I think that there's a time and a place, and now is it, uh, to start thinking about other places to kind of look. If you want to continue to play the AI trade, I do like Vertiv, which is um, critical infrastructure for the data centers that support um, the AI functionality, um, and it, it, it's the leading player in that space. It's had great earnings, continues to really see benefit, and as long as we continue to see this push to AI, which I think we will, we had Meta, Alphabet, and Facebook all indicate that they're finding ways to monetize AI, which has always been the question. And if they're able to do that, that's only going to increase CapEx in that space, which is good for NVIDIA and anything related to that. Another name that I really like is Lidos. Mm -hmm. um, it's a defense contractor. It's a name I've followed for a long time. Um, really outperformed its peers and will benefit from a Trump administration that is likely to have more in government spending. Um, it has both a civil and a defense um, uh, uh, divisions. But I always like to point out that anybody who goes through an airport has used a Lidos, a Lidos technology because mm. uh, when you go through the little scanner, uh, at security, uh, right. look up, it says Lidos on it. All those uh, types of security scanners um, for both defense and civil use are Lidos. Amazing chart. Uh, some of these like uh, defense aerospace trades have been low key, like going uh, nuts. Yeah, and this I don't stock's think up like 79% this year. And if yeah. um, uh, that's year to date, and but the one year number is well over 80 percent and, you know, it's defense. So I'm, nobody's paying attention to it. And it's still only trading at 19 times. Right. So it, it, it's not even expensive. Uh, Howmet, another one uh, that uh, showed up a few times from, I guess, Howmet Aerospace. So I feel like there is like a theme going on in that trade. And it's also interesting with the civilian side, though, too, you get the travel and it seems like there is plenty of willingness still to travel spend. People do want to, and they have the ability still with jobs, solid discretionary spending. I mean, we got sentiment, confidence numbers, all that stuff seems to point to people willing to spend. Labor travel. markets. At the end of the day, it all comes down to if you don't feel like you're about to lose your job, then you will spend money. If you're in fear of potentially being unemployed, you will tighten your purse strings. But the labor markets have uh, started to normalize, and we're not, while we're not necessarily seeing lots of job growth, uh, we're not seeing a lot of layoffs, and we're seeing claims come down. So all of that is, is positive overall for the consumer, for sure. Great stuff. Great takeaways. Great to see you again, Shannon. Thanks a lot. Great to be here.